Hello, how is it going? It is Fake Oak. I'm actually with another Legends of Rune Terror video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a budget deck, something I've been meaning to do for a while now, but just waiting to find the time and to find a suitable deck that I think that you could use to climb with. Today I want to share with you guys a budget version of a Damasian mid-range for the Fallen deck. Uh, we recently saw this little surge of for the Fallen decks finding a bit of success, mostly because they can punish the whole like removal strategy and control from your opponent. It's a big anti-control card and it just blows out the board. For the Fallen is a 8 mana epic card, I understand it's an epic, but for creating a really good budget deck, this is a suitable craft. For the Fallen, uh, when you summon an elite, reduce my cost by one. For each ally that died this round, summon a Dauntless Vanguard, 3-3. Three, three. So basically you'll be flooding your board, doing pretty much on curve plays. Uh, you'll slowly start to reduce the cost of this in hand because we're playing a lot of elites, right? And then eventually your opponent might try and go in for like the whole board clear and then you'll play For the Fallen. You'll like sometimes just rally against them and then beat them down. So to create a budget version of this deck, it actually wasn't um, it wasn't that much of a sacrifice really. There's only going to be a couple of cards that are different. Uh, we are going to be using Sithra of the Bold. This could be increased in numbers. I uh, thought actually I, want, I think it's fine at one. I think the most important card you want to consider putting in when you get it is more copies of Garen. I believe uh, newer players get receive one Garen at the start of the game. I might be wrong. I hope I'm right. I'm pretty sure I'm right. But anyway, the card I'm using in replacement for now is going to be Swiftwing Lancer. 5 mana, 5 4, last breath, create a random elite in hand. It has challenger, it's a really good mid range unit for fighting for the board, generates value, which is quite important against control decks, and it's just a decent unit all around. But this is probably the card that you would cut to replace with more uh, optimized units. So basically, all I'm saying is to make this deck fully optimized, simply take out two Swiftling Lancers and put in two Garens. That would be the way I'd recommend the most. So I'll go through the rest of the list for now. Reinforcements is going to be a uh, single copy of as an alternative late game, mid game kind of threat with mana banked up as you can sometimes uh, play your hand out quite quickly and this can be some good refill. Reinforcements will summon two Dauntless Vanguards then grant elite allies plus one plus one. It can be quite crazy to play this on top of For the Fallen which is not too often but it's also an alternative way of uh, developing a board and buffing For the Fallen etc. Really good. This is another alternative late game bomb. Sithra the Bold, one copy of. Uh, Sithra the Bold will grant other battling allies plus one and fearsome this round. Six mana, six six, decent standard, great effect. Also comes with the elite tag, makes a lot of sense in this deck. Sithra the Bold is also an alternative choice if you haven't, if you've got extra epic wild cards but don't have the champion wild cards. For sure, you can actually consider using Sithra the Bold instead of the Swiftwing Lancers, and that would be a great option. Just one copy of Garen. Garen has the elite tag, five mana, five five, with regeneration. If he strikes twice. You'll level up and you'll start to rally. Rally is really powerful in this deck. Five concerted strikes. You will pick an enemy and two of your allies will strike it. A very powerful mid-range card. And as you strike them, it doesn't uh, count as them striking each other. You'll just strike them. Your units will stay alive and you'll fight for the board quite effectively. Vanguard Squire comes with the elite tag. Four mana, three, three. Uh, when you summon an elite, reduce my cost by one. Makes a lot of sense. It can actually provide this deck with some crazy swing and tempo turns because reducing the cost of this is not hard when your deck is full of elites. Uh, Vanguard Bannerman makes a great option in this deck. Four mana, three, three, of course, with the elite battle tag. So if you grant, if you get the allegiance bonus, by the way, for newer players, allegiance is when the top card of your deck, after you play this, if it matches the same region, you'll get the bonus effect. That effect is granting other allies plus one, plus one. It makes a lot of sense. And a mid-range deck is really powerful for curving out. And also with the elite tag, and you can sometimes play it after Fall of Fallen. It just gets really crazy some of the turns you can have. Silverwing Vanguard, oftentimes not seen in many decks, makes a great fit in this elite style deck. Elite summoning two bodies in one. Uh, when I'm summoned, summon an exact copy of me. Very powerful for buffing for the Fallen and also having units on the field die because you have two copies of this, both reducing the cost of it by two or for the Fallen and also having two units die so you can get more Dauntless Vanguards back. Silverwing Vanguard makes a great option in this deck. Now Succession is a card that we definitely don't see often but makes an obvious fit in this deck. Summon a Dauntless Vanguard, Dauntless Vanguards are elites, three mana spell actually. So this is quite good for fixing up your early game curve. Uh, so you can utilize that spell mana, which traditionally in mid-range style decks don't oftentimes get the choice to do. 
Succession actually has been providing some pretty good value in this deck and I really like it. Uh, Relentless Pursuit is going to be three copies of. The ability to rally is quite powerful, so you'll be able to attack again and end your opponent sooner. This is oftentimes going to be one of your finisher cards and makes a lot of sense in a deck like this. Three copies of Vanguard Defender, two mana 2-2 two -two with tough and elite battle tag. Battle tag. <laughs> the elite tag. Uh, anyway, um, this two mana 2-2 two -two with tough actually is not that bad at all. We're mostly using it because of the elite tag, but actually it contests the board huge on turn two. It can be quite annoying for your opponent to deal with actually, so makes a great fit in this deck. Three copies of single combat, an ally and an enemy strike each other. It's just really good removal and it helps to like kind of get value from your board state and turning unfavorable board states into favorable with one simple combat trick. Battlesmith, two mana two two. When you summon an elite, grant a plus one plus one. Makes a lot of sense. In this list, we're only going to be using uh, only three one drops in this deck. C3 or the Cloudfield, another elite, one mana two two, quite strong. Um, some most decks will run more one drops, right? But this deck can fix up its curve and have more powerful tempo plays later, alongside Vanguard Squire and Succession, etc. So if you don't, if you miss the one drop, it's going to feel a little bit bad, but you can oftentimes fix it up with more powerful tempo plays. So having to cut down to three. Uh, one drops is absolutely fine. The deck finds value later. The link to the deck will be in the description below. Don't forget to go check it out. We're going to have a few games here today showing the hot streak that we had uh, and showing just what For the Fallen can do against some more uh, greedy lists. Anyway, you guys have a fantastic day and I will see you soon. Isn't it super handicapped to run budget decks on Master? That would have been a win. We just didn't have the uh, rally. Is it, it, it handicapped is probably not the right word more than like handicapped I mean I guess so this is going to sound crazy splash off return because it it's a heavy unit deck and uh Bannerman. You mean the, the return from Ionia? I would hope that we have enough value. Like most of the time, they're not going to be able to deal with the board state. They'll just try and finish us over the top or like clear the entire board. If it's like some sort of like board game, I don't know how to explain it. If it's like some kind of matchup where we're fighting for the board, we won't need to worry about playing cards like return too much, if that makes sense. Soldier, to me. Does it make sense? I think so. I'm not sure if I'm explaining it properly. So like this is a, like that's the when I was playing this like the other day, I constantly found that the problem is like if you haven't got the a mana card in hand or the rallies like there's gonna be scenarios where you want one or the other constantly like in this position we would love to have like rallies and stuff but we don't have it or even the dauntless the um for the fallen how you going ez09 by the way what's up man We're actually going to go on for the kill next turn. Devotion to battle. Like in this kind of board state, we would love to have rally. If I just open attack, what are my chances of winning? He blocks four, goes down to minus three. I don't really have a rally card, so it's not going to help us much. So let us buff the board. I guess this guy is truly an ASOL main because of his name. Oh, originally when I saw this guy's name, because I've versed him a few times, 
I didn't really think about that. I just thought about the fact that his name said he's a solid Roma. But that's kind of cool. That seems right. I will protect you. Looks like we're in a pretty good spot here. Last light. Our hand's kind of missing, like, you know, one of the big engines. So I have to try and make this work without it. Star the skies. So I definitely want to keep up Concerted Strike here. So I have 9 mana. I can play like Silverwing Vanguard I guess. Okay. I'm not going to react with anything until I have to. So I'm going to save the Concerted Strike in case he attempts to do some shenanigans against me as I go for the kill. We're like one rally away from winning this game. Oh, never mind. He's going to do it now. Cool. So we can Concerted. Uh, one, two. That should win us the game, hopefully. He was under pressure to try and do it prior, but that might end up costing him the game. Hey, we finally found something. If I develop, what do I get punished by? So he can essentially single combat me to stop three. And then I'm still pushing six and then he can't heal. I don't think there's a way for him to survive this attack. He can have concerted plus single combat. That won't work. This is fine. Judgment. Oh, if he runs Judgment, at least I have for the Fallen. <laughs> and that deck doesn't normally run Judgment. Trundle Tree End. Yes, Defiance, the classic, the one and only. I wonder if I go greedy here or if I just go like battles, uh, Vanguard, uh, Vanguard Defender into Squire, etc. I probably go a little bit greedy here. Play a Battlesmith. It's dangerous out there. Take this. Sure. The Marcian soldier is worth tenfold. He leads our drills from morning to night and he's the first to head into the fray. Hard as steel, steady as stone. Couldn't choose a finer leader. My man. What the f okay. Why did he do that? He has Vile Feast. Why didn't he do it together? So he had a chump blocker. Uh, it's fine. Uh, it's kind of strange, but sure. I saw a tournament where all they did was Trin Trundle. That sounds fun. <laughs> That's a power play. He can't play Ruination next turn, so I can do some pretty disgusting things. Ready for deployment. This is the kind of hand we like to see, guys.
Oh wow. My journey continues. That's a power play this turn. Hate the Marcia. Come on, bro. Is this guy fucking okay? The trolls are going to war. Unbelievable, man. The hell is this doing here? Is this just like for chump blockers? Alright, cool. Nice emote game. Nice board state too. Why are you blocking with Trundle? He's, a, he's like BMing me and then blocks with Trundle. Like, what? Hello? I hope I can defeat this deck. So do I, man. What's the, like, least committal play? What if I go, like, Vanguard Sergeant into Fort Demacia? And if he pogs out, I can play for the Fallen. This is at one mana. I have seven mana. I can play for Demacia to threaten the lethal. And if not, I could play for the Fallen. Yep. He does it before as well. Why didn't he wait till I committed the Fort Marcia? He's misplayed. Here, I'm gonna drop a... This. <laughs> he should have waited till I committed for Demacia there. Like, that's such a misplay, man. I was always going to commit for Demacia, right? Like in that position, if I'm playing this deck, I'm always committing for Demacia. Now I drop the Poro Pride and we smack him. So yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I believe I'm always in a position that before I attack, I play for Demacia. I still would have killed him anyway, right? So it didn't matter actually, come to think of it. Yeah, come to think of it, I think I still had lethal. He clears my board. I play five four fours. Yeah, that's just lethal. So no, maybe he's not incorrect. Yeah, we always want to have full of fallen in the hand, right? This is like pog champ. I believe you always keep full of fallen. It feels too risky to me if you get rid of it. Which is why I like, oh, I, I wondered, I'm like, should I run Trundle in this deck? Ready for like, let's say we weren't trying to make a budget deck and we were just building a deck of like Mono Demacia, but then we splash in Trundle for the behold value. Well, actually, no, Trundle wouldn't make any sense. What I mean to say is, what if we ran some behold cards? That probably doesn't make much sense now that I think about it. I can play a Succession or Vanguard Sergeant. I think Vanguard Sergeant just makes the most sense, right? Right? I think. Double for the Fallen versus this deck. Splendid. I'm pretty happy with maybe this trade. Is this trade okay? Like he blocks here. Chumps there, right? I think I'm okay with this trade. 
In my opinion, do I think Ice Pillar should be nerfed? Uh, that's a tough one to say. I think Ice Pillar is really strong. I'm not sure if it needs to be nerfed though, unfortunately. I could, I could have a Sook and say that I think it needs to get nerfed, but yeah. Warding Stone should be nerfed, yes. That should be reverted back to what it used to be, which was a 0 3 for 0 mana. At this point, if it's getting played that much, the reason why I buffed it was because it was like underplayed garbage. But now it's no longer underplayed garbage, right? So... I would say that card should, you know, receive somewhat of a nerf to at least like, because you know, ramping feels really strong right now. Ramping just feels super strong. And nobody's ever considering clearing, no one's ever considering actually clearing the, uh, the warding stones. So that should be a viable option though. The option to want to consider clearing it. But, but we don't get that option. I think I'm always doing this this turn. I wonder if I go Bannerman. Go Bannerman or Silver Vanguard. What do I do? What do I do? Hey, what's it doing here? Like, it could potentially have, like, Make it rain or Mystic Shot. Hmm. At least he played the twi uh, Twisted Fate preemptively. Should I drag the keg here actually? Maybe I do. I know you're not really supposed to drag them and he's most likely going to use it anyway, but what if I don't drag it? Nah, I never drag it here. Forget about it. Clear off. So I need to like, the thing is though, like I don't want to lose my board. Oh wow, that's not what I expected. I don't want to lose my board before I have a chance to play for the Fallen. Oh. I wonder if Bannerman was correct here. Cool, so he commits the Mystic Shot. I will play the Battlesmith now. And next turn, I wonder if I play a Fordamasia. Oh yeah, we play a Fordamasia, 100%. I could also consider Relentless Pursuit alongside Vanguard Squire. Actually, this might be better. This might be better to like, <laughs> do this. That's Pog. This is gonna be a lot for him to deal with. This is indeed going to be a lot for him to deal with. Like I'm already summoning back. If I want to, I can summon a full board just with these two for the Fallens. Never lost a fair game. Oh, sick. Sick. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful, yes. Yes. 
Oh, we just we just play more, right? We lose all the value, but we get the insane relentless pursuit. Oh, this is the hand. High rolling, dude. Oh. Ah, oh, beautiful. <laughs> yes, I can't believe I was thinking about playing for Demacia that turn. Obviously, that looked so much better. What do you think of my opinion of vi revitalizing Raw? Revitalizing Raw should target an ally on the field, not in hand. Hmm. I don't think that it wouldn't be the same card at that point though then would it? It'd be a completely different card. So I know I don't know I don't I don't know if I agree with that. It feels really strong. All these decks feel really strong because of ramp, because they're ramping into these cards really quickly. That's the part that gets me the most. It's the whole ramping aspect. It's nice to see ramping's pretty strong now, but Yeah. It is what it is. I'm only going to swing with this because of Pale Cascade, which is a high probability for him to have. High probability for Pale Cascade to exist. He missed his allegiance too. That's kind of huge. So I guess to sum up my opinion of that, it's like revitalizing raw isn't much of an issue for me. Because if they've made it that far and they get to revitalizing raw, like they just win anyway. So yeah, it is what it is. So I'm just going to go for like succession into Ban Bannerman for sure. And we have a 100% win rate of hitting our allegiance buff. So that is spectacular. Spacey Sketcher. So he's going to find lots of chump blockers. It's like fine, I guess. Lots of chump blockers. He missed his allegiance buff again. I feel really bad for this guy. So he should always feel comfortable going down to three here. Especially when the trades look this garbage. And we can like pretty much just pursuit next turn if he plays something kind of greedy, if that makes sense. He should pass on me if he's smart. But he might not want to do that. This looks like a pretty good Relentless Pursuit. What should I do in this scenario? Should I single combat the uh, Mountain Scryer? Should I just develop a wider board? Ready for deployment. I think I'll just go wider here, right? And what's the punish for me just playing for Demacia? Comet? 
I don't think he has any more invoked cards left. Actually, homework anxiety. He played one invoked card here, one invoked card there, one from Spacey Sketcher. He missed both of his invokes here. Yeah, I don't think he has, um, actually no, unless this one, where was this puppy come from? Let's just go for it. I'm, I'm, you could have, yeah, perhaps Comet. Nice. So I decided to actually get rid of the Mountain Scryer in case of him having... What would even be playable at 5 mana? A49. What's our fake? What's the deck? Budget Bannerman at the moment. Oh, sorry, not Bannerman. Budget Elites Bannerman, we'll call it, right? Budget Elites Bannerman, which feels kind of solid right now. On a 4 win streak. 